Good morning. Wow, it is already humid this morning. I mean, it's it's 9.45 and the sky behind me is gray and it's humid. Very humid. Let me see if you can see. Look at that. That is very, very humid today. So today I want to talk to you about mulch, mulching in a dry land area. Everybody recommends, oh, you need to mulch around everything. You need to mulch around, mulch around, preserve the water, mulch around, mulch around. Um, but they don't really discuss the dangers of mulching. <laughs> and there are quite a few dangers, actually. Um, and some of them you wouldn't expect. So the first danger would be, of course, fire. Your mulch is a bunch of dry, it's dry and it's on the ground and it's food for fire. So if there is a fire in your vicinity, uh, mulching your area would actually help the fire to spread. So that's number one. It's obvious and, uh, you know, for example, for myself, it's something that all this summer I have worried about because it's so dry hopefully this coming year I'll be able to plant more vegetation so that I will have to use less mulch <laughs> because the fire situation is is a big deal especially here and it's a big deal in every dry land area it's just something you have to worry about so another thing that you have to worry about with mulching that a lot of people don't explain this thoroughly enough is causing the soil underneath to become anaerobic it if you mulch around a plant and that mulch is really really thick if it's thick enough that the moisture can't escape it's also thick enough that the moisture cannot get in and then the soil just sits there and it can't breathe and it becomes anaerobic and that is toxic to your plants. So, whereas mulching is really important, it's even more important that your plants have air, they can breathe. And one of the ways that you can get around that, even with a big thick pile of mulch is to mix the mulch up with various mediums and that leads me into the third danger of mulching if you're going to mulch around veg vegetation be it trees plants vegetables it doesn't matter what it's nice for you to have mulch that's going to give something back to the ground and if you mulch with one thing only one type of mulch be it wood chips or just grass or just one medium that's not going to feed your plants as it's breaking down in fact it'll take a very long time for it to break down and in the meantime you've got the risk of you know the soil becoming anaerobic and you've got the 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 risk of the soil not not regenerating so you know, you could put the mulch down, but you might as well put down a, a, a load of rocks or bricks um, because it's not going to really do much for your soil. So the best type of mulch is a mulch actually that's a mix of different things. It's a variety of things. Uh, you have, you know, straw, grasses, twigs of different kinds leaf mulch, um, animal droppings, you name it, all mixed in. And then as that mulch breaks down, it actually turns into compost. And over the course of the year, you are basically composting right there in place. And that's the best type of mulch, in my opinion, is to have a whole mix of things so that you, so that you create an environment for an economy, for all the little microorganisms. And you know, if you're gonna mulch, you might as well feed your plants at the same time. 
Another thing about mulch is people load on the mulch, especially like wood chips, and then they don't water the mulch. They just water the plants and then the mulch dries up. And when you live in a dry land area, the mulch doesn't break down unless you water it. And even then it takes a really long time, especially if it's wood chips. And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you don't water the mulch, the soil underneath the mulch actually dries out. Even if you're mulching a plant, let's say you have a tree and then the tree has the mulch around it. So if you're only watering the tree and not watering the mulch around it, then the outer ring where the mulch is, is going to dry up. And then that soil is going to become so dry, it might even become very hard, and it's going to become hydrophobic. So that when it does rain, or when it does get moisture, that particular ground won't accept the rain. The rain's just going to wash away. And if you have a large area that's mulched and it's even on a slight slope or you know a heavy rain comes by it can wash all that mulch away as summer progresses i water my mulch because in the beginning of the year the the moisture under the mulch is you know it's still there it's maintained by the mulch so I can concentrate on just watering my trees, you know, with my water buckets. And then as August comes along and everything's getting more dry, I convert my watering to twice a week, full water, even the mulch around. So everything, everything gets moisture. And, and I do this on purpose so that when it does start to rain and we get our first heavy rain that my mulch will not wash away because if you can see here everything is on a slight slope and my mulch is my mulch is light it's it's just very light and if there's a heavy heavy rain if we got a storm all of this has the risk of running down this very very mild slope and I prevent that by keeping everything moist already so that the mulch is not hydrophobic and that the ground can absorb the moisture that is given by the rain. The type of mulch that I recommend is mulch that has a whole variety of different vegetation in it. So I have here grasses and plants of different types, leaves, I've got stalks from you know heavy duty plants, I've got twigs, and mixed in all of this I've got rabbit pellets and chicken waste. And you know, as the summer goes on, you know, not only is this mulch protecting the ground to help keep the moisture in but it's also breaking down and composting so you can see where the chickens have scratched over here this mulch has already broken down quite a bit it's already turning to soil i have to add more mulch to that but i'm going to wait um, to mulch until after I plant whatever vegetation that I choose to put here in the fall, which will be in another month or so. But as you can see, this under here, it's already starting to turn into good soil. And I have the mulch, but I don't have it so thick that it would inhibit um, soil moisture. And now here it is at the end of the summer and you can see that it's actually turning into good soil. So my mulch was a few inches thick but I made sure to put a variety of different things in the mulch so that as they broke down they would compost and provide 
some sort of nutrition for the soil and provide an environment for the microorganisms that I want to live there. Now it's okay to mulch with just one item. You know, if you want to mulch with wood chips, have at it, have a good time. If you're in a dry land area, just know that those wood chips aren't going to break down very fast, especially if you don't water them. If there's a slight slope, the, the hydrophobic aspect might encourage the wood chips to wash away in a heavy rain. If you never plan to plant anything where you put those wood chips, then it's probably a good idea to have wood chips there. But if you plan to grow things or, or you put the wood chips around things that you're growing, it's probably a good idea to mix other plants in with it. And it's a good idea to water it throughout the summertime. You might say, well, it kind of defeats the purpose, you know, but as long as you keep the soil underneath the wood chips moist, then it's, then they're good. But if that soil dries out, you haven't really done anything for the soil. And it made, it would have made no difference if you put wood chips there or not. The soil would still be dead. So these are things to keep in mind when you mulch in a dry land area. The really important thing is to keep the moisture in and sometimes you have to provide the moisture if you if you have months without rain and as it gets towards the end of the dry season even if you didn't water the mulch throughout the entire dry season start watering it towards the end of the dry season so that when the first rains come the, the, the ground is ready to accept the rain, that the ground is, is not hydrophobic. So hopefully this video helps you to understand mulching a little better and how to use mulching to improve your soil life and also to avoid the risks that mulching would have in a dry land environment. Until next time.